Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Killer's coming. Killer's gonna get you. This is nah, episode... Nah, 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 nah. Go ahead, This Chad. is episode 268, recorded September 18th, 2024. Magazine. I was waiting for you to say something else. I'm not sure you were going to have, have something to stick in there. Killer is going to get you. Well, what else could you possibly say? Uh, anyway, I'm I'm your host, Jeff Moore. This podcast about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-host Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic or not so classic film from this radical gory influential and gruesome decade mm. joining me tonight is crystal cleveland <laughs> actress and youtuber what's crystal, up, what's shaking? Jeff? not much i'm happy to be here this is I, a good, I, I can't believe we haven't done this film I, I, yeah i was surprised yeah, well, i was shocked i was shocked i found out i found out what happened Oh, okay. Okay. They, they had it on the story. schedule once and somebody nixed it. Wow. Uh, what? I, I can know. understand why. Yeah, yeah. Really? Someone who doesn't like yeah. disco. Yeah. Well, yeah, it feels very 70s, but this is a classic, though. I think it's. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not it. naming names. Yeah. Oh, was it Chad? No, no, no. It oh. weren't me. Uh, you know, it's not me. I say yes to everything. According yeah. to my yeah, source. me too. Uh, me Fury too. of the Wolfman, too. Sure, why not? I don't care. Yeah, I'm not. Too good for Crystal. Anything. Hey, you know what I'm going to do when we get done tonight? What? I'm going to watch your unboxing video of Art the Clown. Oh, is it terrible? Oh yeah, look. Oh, you want to see? You want to see I him? Didn't, I didn't get a look, chance look. to watch it. Yet. There he is. See uh, him? He's right oh, there. So oh, cool. there he is. Oh, he oh, yeah. came with yeah. the sunglasses and everything. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah, and this. Yeah, he's cool. That that post you made with that that picture you had of you that was that was perfect. It was just perfect. It was Chef's kiss. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do. I knew I knew this wasn't quite right. But, but oh, something. Wait a minute. All right. Uh, also with us is Chad Hunt, comic book artist, co-host of Decades of Horror, the classic era, and the 1970s, and this one. How you doing, Chad? I'm. I still hate disco. How did well, 50 years later? Sense, but now you know how I feel when I have to watch all these movies with heavy metal in the background. So. Yeah, but I don't care. Really? <laughs> He's like, but, I don't, but, I, don't, but I don't like disco either. So, you know, what the heck? Uh, uh, how, and uh, the uh, the uh, convention went well? The film yeah, festival? the Recavic yeah. Horror Film Fest went very, very well and a uh, nice turnout. Great a lot film. of great people, great films. Uh, you know, and uh, hopefully it'll do better this year, you know, or better than this year. And not that this year was bad, but I, it's growing continually Good oh, each wonderful. year. Awesome. And uh, yeah, so this 10th anniversary this year. So Yay. this was the 10th wow. one. That's hopefully awesome. there'll be a lot more. I'm, I'm, I love seeing all the North Carolina filmmakers submit. Yeah. So hopefully this year there'll be a lot more North Carolina films. Um, submitting with a lot of our friends you know mm -hmm. that we put in there and uh there were a few this year and uh we had bobby came home by mm -hmm. dave harlequin which is a great it was a great great one and um so yeah we had the, the blue-eyed boy and mr death by jason oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. great 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 film so hopefully we'll just start getting a whole lot more north carolina films in there i'd like to see that so. yeah excellent uh, last but not least is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, Yay. special effects guru, co-host of Decades of Horror, the 1970s, published author, and all-around nice guy. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, buy my book, Rom, R-A-U-M. Um, I'm hoping next year at Rec Havoc we'll have a film I wrote because we're going to be filming it in about a month called Emotional Support Demon. Dave Harlequin will be directing that, and we have a great Yay. cast. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. So things are is beginning that, is, to is the is the, uh, is the fundraiser closed? 
Do you know? No, I mean, it'll be closed by the time this plays. Uh, uh, I think, okay. we've, got, I think okay. we've got about 10 days left. But we've already raised uh, over half of what we were asking for. And it's already a bigger budget than what I'm used to, which well, would, wouldn't take much. Awesome. But it's actually a pretty good chunk of, chunk of change. Cool. And cool. Congrats. It even chunkier. Yeah, yeah, thanks. It's not as easy to raise money through crowdfunding as it used to be. The bloom is off that rose. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. But folks, right. are, uh, folks are starting to make indie films again. And they were, uh, Wreck Havoc had some fantastic ones. And a lot of the really good ones were local North Carolina yeah. films. Yeah. The, the quality is off the charts. You know, the technology has just gotten so good to make stuff. It's really wonderful Excellent. to see. Excellent. And then there's well, this film. Decades of Horror uh, partners with Play Now Media on yes. several of their channels. Uh, in particular, Decades of Horror of the 1980s is on the Wicked Horror TV channel. It's also on the retro horror movies of 70s, 80s, and 90s, but that particular one is only available on Fire TV and Roku right now. Um, so if you have either one of those, you can check that out. Uh, but, um, yeah, and I did look it up. I think it's if you do an annual subscription, it's 50 bucks. You know, the monthly subscription is more, uh, or you can just subscribe and not pay. And they have a couple of options on how you want to get ads. You know, you could, you can get the first 45 minutes of the movie ad free if you want. Uh, so anyway, check those out. Lots of good stuff there. A lot of the movies that we do, in fact, we're doing one, uh, next week on seventies. That's, that's where it's at. That's one of the places it's at. Uh, so, so check them out. And check us out there. On this podcast, we start by giving a few basic details of the film we are covering, followed by each of our first impressions of the movie. And then we'll move into a general discussion of whatever trips or triggers, hopefully, related to the film. Hopefully. Hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> All right. And spoiler alert, this is a 42, 44-year-old movie. Um, what do you like, Jeff? Uh, mm. So, if you haven't seen it, you should go watch it because we're going to talk about it. It is available, it's out there. And uh, so, topic today is prom night. And I don't know why, I just like that picture. Hmm. And the cool photo, Martin. she's in the tub, bathtub. Uh, no, she was looking over something in the in the high school. Uh, it looks like she's in water. That's why I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is this thing on? Directed <laughs> by Paul Lynch, <laughs> written by William Gray, and Robert Guza Jr. wrote a story, which was the story that he wrote was of the little kids at the beginning, hmm. uh, which which you know led to things. The cast includes and i got a long list here some you'll recognize some you won't uh because you know this is one of those films that takes place in a high school and it's at a prom so there's a lot of main characters jamie lee curtis leslie nielsen yeah casey stevens Anne marie martin who was billed as eddie benton at the time hmm. uh antoinette bauer michael tuff robert a silverman david mucci Mary Beth Rubens, Joy Thompson, and Sheldon Rabowski. Production company is Simcom Limited, also Prom Night Productions, and the copyright holder is Guardian Trust Company. It was actually released by, uh, or, or distributed, or publicized, or whatever, by Avco Embassy, which did a really good publishing campaign. Um, filmed in Toronto, Ontario, in Canada. Not oh, Toronto, Canada. Ohio, but Toronto, mm. Canada. Uh, filming dates, August 7th to September 13th, 1979. Released on July 18th, 1980 in the U.S. The budget was $1.5 million Canadian dollars, which is uh, about $1.3 million U.S. dollars at the time. And the box office, $14.8 million. Made a profit. Made some cash. And the synopsis. At a high school senior prom, a masked killer stalks four teenagers who were responsible for the accidental death of a classmate six years previously. And that's true. I don't know about that. I don't know about accidental. <laughs> the age of those 
people mm. looked like it, it was like 30 years later. Well, yeah, the accidental. So. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, okay. Uh, Jamie, <laughs> well, Jamie Lee was uh, like 21 when this was filmed. Anyway, we're on a first name basis. Right. So, you, know, yeah. you and Jamie Lee, yeah. Uh, See, yeah. I just call her JL. That's how close we are. <laughs> No doubt. Um, well, let's get to, uh, well, there's a lot of, do I want to do the also known as, or wait? Oh, there's that. so many. There's a, there's a bunch of them and I, I can't do French, but the ball de la horror in France, what? the, the horror ball, oh. uh, blood mid, midnight, Danish for bloody midnight, Don Etrada in Kea Casa, Casa in Quela Casa, Italian. Don't go into that house. What house? Oh, well, I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. That one over there. Terror, terror, and la noche de graduation. Mexico yeah, terror and I... graduation night. Hmm. Graduation sangrienta, bloody graduation. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Germany, prom night, the Nacht des Schlechters, the night of the butcher. And uh, also Grauen und Namen, horror without a name. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Well, sure. All right. Um, Prom night's the best of that bunch, actually. Yeah, Simple, for sure. You know, you get the idea of what's going to happen. We've all been there to prom. It, it's a horror show. I have this one backwards, I guess. Well, let's do, we're going to do uh, first impressions here first. And uh, this is Crystal's pick. Yay! So, Crystal, when did you first see this? And uh, does it hold up? What do you think of it now? I uh, don't remember the first time I saw this. I know I saw it at some point. Um, at some point with, like, yeah, at my childhood. But I can't remember it. Okay, I remember the second one more. Mm. Uh, Hello, Mary Lou. <laughs> I'm like too. Too. Yeah, because I think that one was a lot more fun, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. But I think this movie still holds up. This movie feels very 70s. I already mentioned that. I mean, it feels straight out of the 70s, but it's an I think it's a great film. I think it's a total classic. I don't love this film. I don't feel the need to like watch it all the time, but I think the acting is really good. I think the story makes sense. There's not very much gore at all. So like it, that's unusual. I mean, you have the, you know, the machete, the head or whatever, but that's, there's really not much at all, but I didn't hate the story. I mean, it's, it's not great, but I think everyone should watch this film for sure. Like this is a classic. This is one that I think deserves to be watched. I do want to rewatch the second one now because I do remember really liking that. I think that one's yeah. like set in the fifties or something, isn't it? Cause I think they used a hello. Mary Lou. <laughs> it sounds like it from the title. Yeah. There was actually yeah. four of prom nights. Oh, there uh, were four. I haven't seen. Oh. I, I only remember the first before. two, but yeah, there's. Four I only remember the first two as well. Oh no! Now I got. Now I got to look for now, these. Now you got to search. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis is great, and she looks beautiful. And mm -hmm. you know, one of these women was married to Michael Crichton. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the bad. Yeah, which the, is the, really the, so the Anne Marie Martin, who was billed as Eddie Benton, her birth name was Edmonda Benton. Yikes! Oh wow! Which makes me think somebody in her family was from Edmonton or something. But uh, anyway, oh, wow. she was she was born in Toronto, and they mm -hmm. called her Eddie Benton. And then this was the last movie that that was her billing. She changed it to Anne Marie Martin. Good. Man. And she co-wrote Twisters. Yeah, she wrote Twisters. How crazy is that? That's or cool, Twister. Actually. I think she did Twister. Twister, and... Twister, not the S. Yeah, take mm. the S off the first one. Kind All done. Crazy. Yeah. Done. Okay. Done. okay. Well, I want to hear. <clears throat> uh oh. From Chad Hunt. Oh, here we go. Point counterpoint. Okay. <laughs> That used to be a show. Right, first of all, let me say I respect Crystal's opinion on the movie. Uh oh. <laughs> you know, we I, pretty I much, but yeah, pretty much if she likes something, I know I'm going to like it. And 
I trust her judgment on movies and stuff like that. But I hated this bullshit movie. <laughs> man, did I, I man, did I, and this is the first time I've seen it. Uh, and uh, that might have something to do with it, I'm, I'm sure. But uh, oh, that's, uh, I, I'm not a big slasher fan. I've just never been a big mm, slasher mm -hmm. fan besides the biggies, Jason, Michael Myers, and then those guys. But the little spinoffs and cheesy ones that like Saturday, the, you know, Easter day or whatever. And all these other ones that based on holiday, I could never stand those. And, and so, and I love Jamie Lee Curtis. She's great in the film. She, as usual, she's great in the film. I just, I, it took so long to get the story moving and get to the action and get, and get to it. It just bored me to tears. I hate it. And don't even get me started in disco. <laughs> yeah. Man, man, do I hate it. I hate disco. <laughs> I hate it. And and this, this the dance numbers just went on and on and on like there was no end to it. Yeah. And, you know, John Travolta, you can kiss my ass because I hate <laughs> disco. And and this movie was just full of it. The flashing lights. I think I had three or four epileptic seizures <laughs> while I, I was watching. Oh my it. god, that was yeah. There needs to be a trigger uh, warning on that thing. I just didn't like it. I didn't like the the killer was kind of sucky, and I didn't. I just did not like it. Uh, um, Jamie Lee coming off one of the biggest uh, horror films in history, Halloween, and and then does this one. I was just completely i was really really let down by it and did not appreciate it one iota okay well i'm sorry how's that okay. for hijinks but you still needed to see it at least once so that yeah I, I will admit it does have that classic uh connotation and i'm glad i did watch it but okay. i hated it so yeah, i'm kind of the tiebreaker here sort of until jeff comes in and and i'm kind of <laughs> down the middle um Okay, so this movie, let me just preface it with saying, I love Canada, and I love <laughs> Canadians. I love visiting my daughter in Montreal. Canadians are awesome people. They're the, like the nicest people, except for okay, the hockey buddy. team loses. And, and then they go yeah. crazy. <laughs> Blame, uh, the food is fantastic. Uh, it's just uh, Montreal is just a wonderful place to visit. If it weren't for the parking, it'd be almost perfect. That all being said, boy, this movie's Canadian. This is a Canadian horror movie. And I don't know why Canadian horror movies are the way they often are. They're not all that way, but a lot of them are. Sometimes they're really good, like Pin. Sometimes yeah. they're, you know, Zombie Nightmare or whatever. Um, there's a softness to it. This whole movie looks like it was shot through gauze. Like, like they were yeah, trying yeah. to make the 30-year-old the teenagers look younger. Uh, every, it's just so soft-looking. And it, it bothers me after a while. The, um, oh my God, the disco. So now I don't hate disco the way Chad does. There are some, you know, it's kind of like rap for me. It's the really good ones, the top notch ones are great. Um, I like Saturday Night Fever. I like the Bee Gees songs and that. What I don't like is when you can't afford the Bee Gees, so you hire someone to write Bee Gees esque music <laughs> songs that kind of sound they sound enough like you're going to get sued but you're not going to lose and that's exactly yeah. what they did they just came up with songs with plausible deniability and and they're crap that disco dance sequence which i i swore i remember it as being like 10 minutes long i clocked it this time and it was only like three three and a half minutes but it still felt like 10 minutes it felt like it yeah it goes on forever, and and I don't like that too. I have to admit, Jamie I don't like dance. this though. So Jamie yeah. can dance, and and but you know, it was. Do you just, remember physical? Hello. Yeah. Well, was, yeah. She looked great well, in that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, but now all that being said, uh, the the kills are pretty, bl you know, bloodless. Although there's a couple of decapitations, but yeah. Um. All that being said, I do admire one thing. I actually kind of liked the characters that. They spent some time making the characters sort of interesting, so it meant something when they died. <coughs> I felt bad when the two, the one that one guy who's such a loser and manages to score a much better date than than he should. And then they're they have their Nick. their little brief sex scene, and then they're like they're both virgins, and it's like, well, this is kind of sweet. Okay, well they're dead. They're well, I felt bad. 
I felt bad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, although they all had it coming, the reveal was uninteresting. There were a bunch of red herrings, but you knew it wasn't them. And, and, you know, there's this Carrie subplot. This movie's taking a little <laughs> bit of this, a little bit of that. Exactly. And yeah. it, it's, it just felt kind of like a movie made by committee. Like, how can we, how can we earn 10 times what we spent on it? Well, I was like, well, Carrie was a hit and Halloween was a hit and Siren Night Fever was a hit. Let's blend them all together and see what we get. And you know what? It actually did work. But boy, is this one dated. Crystal keeps saying it, it looks like a 70s movie, which is true, but it was made in the 80s. So, you know, yeah. even when it came out, it felt dated. And now, now it feels absolutely like a relic. Um, but, you know, it's worth watching once. I don't like slasher movies that much, but this one to me is relatively inoffensive. It, it didn't make me just like, kind of, you know, feel bad about watching it, but it's slight. It's slight. So I'm in the middle. I don't love it as much as Crystal does, and I don't hate it as much as Chad does. Okay, I didn't say I loved it. Well, liked I said, it. I, I, I liked it. Yeah, yeah. You I was like, it. oh, no, no, no. But I some yeah, 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 yeah. You patted yeah. it on the head and said, you're fine. You're, you're That's, fine. It's, it's, I mean, and it's worth a watch. It's a classic. Yeah. Classic yeah. doesn't always mean Go that. out in the yard and play. Honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but let's okay, see what well, Jeff thinks. Hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I... I'm kind of down the middle too. I think it, it is definitely worth seeing. I mean, the thing made uh, it had a return of like what I don't know what it's, it's like ten times. Eight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, know. ten times. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, so ten to one ratio. I'll take uh, that. And you know, the director said seventy five percent of that was Jamie Lee. You know, she had just had that thing go, and Fog had just come out too right. earlier that year. So. Hmm. Uh, or the fog um but and you know i'm slow at this stuff i i try not to figure stuff out unless it's too obvious but i i right up until the end i i had two different people i thought it might be um and then it mm -hmm. anyway uh disco not a big disco fan and they just went nuts on that bill's right i mean literally the director was a big disco fan and he he had all these disco hits that he thought were going to be in the movie and that's what he played during these dance scenes and and the intro and all that stuff and uh then when he went to get the rights found out <laughs> you know, one awesome. song was going to cost you know would like the you know increase his budget by 50% and then the Ooh. next song would so then he told the uh, the uh, composer for the score to write him five or six disco sounds that sounded, like Bill said, a lot like the hits. Well, how much like the hits? Uh, enough that we get sued, but not enough that we lose. <laughs> he actually said that to the guy. That's, so, that's good. And according, according to the composer, they did get sued. Um, and they settled for like uh, 50000 or something. It just didn't, didn't oh. go anywhere. That's a pretty slick move, actually. Yeah, um, because you basically, wow, get the same sound for way, mm -hmm. way, way less. Well, one of, for thing. instance, one of the songs, one of the director's favorite songs was uh, "Born to Be Alive." Mm -hmm. Born, I don't know that song. Born. Born to be You'd alive. recognize it if you oh, heard okay. it. Yeah. Uh, and the, and the, they they wrote a song that was "Turn Around, Turn Around" to the like the exact same tune. <laughs> she said "Turn Around" yeah. several times instead of "Born." Anyway, it's uh, <laughs> that's funny. So I, I, you know, and I think maybe to <laughs> me the most interesting about this movie is the the track that Jamie Lee was on, which is phenomenal at this point in time that she did these movies. And we got a, we've got a graphic later to talk about that, so I won't talk about it too much here. But uh, um. Yeah, so I'm okay with it. I'm not a disco fan, but you know, Jamie Lee is a decent dancer. It didn't look oh, as yeah. uh, as bad as I saw, and I it, it's it's interesting to me. I mean, I guess it's acting. I I saw. Okay, okay, I bought the Blu-ray. Uh, no, <laughs> what a shot! Um, because there was a, there's a bunch of uh, behind the scenes stuff or, or shooting clips but while they were shooting so they they show them doing these dance scenes and they're all laughing enjoying it and everything and then they get to the cut and then they all 
mm-hmm. turning around and walking yeah. walk across the stage and they're just <laughs> they're over just, it it's a weird thing to look yeah a weird thing to see so um yeah and her prom dress was not was it it oh, was so God. ugly i love the red one I like that. Yeah, yeah. That pretty. Well, I, I thought it was okay once she started dancing, but the one she had on when the guy picked her up, it just had this. Yeah, because it, was it a jacket or something over it? Yeah, it so yeah. ugly. Anyway, so. Yeah. That's the name of that, too. It kind of reminds me of, like, remember 16 Candles when some yeah. when she shows up in that ugly prom dress? I was like, gross. <laughs> that is not what I expected. Yuck. And I was kind of disappointed because I felt like, uh, you know, Leslie Nielsen's name is big on the poster, but right. he has very, very small part. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, and there was a bunch of other scenes with him that they cut out. So anyway, I think it must be time for. Uh oh. Before we get to the posters, it's now time for. Taglines with Chad. <laughs> oh, there can't be that many for this film. Nah. Yeah, right. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. These are the girls of Hamilton High. Tonight, they will be more beautiful than ever before in their lives. Because tonight is prom night, and someone has come to the prom alone. Just to watch them dance. To see them fall in love. To see okay. them die. Well, I'm over we... it. I was over it like <laughs> yeah. halfway. At the, at, was this... like, what? Are you reading I the like, script? I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. Reading yeah. we went a long ways for that one. Yeah. <laughs> I no, no, no. On, Chatty no. Kathy. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. Oh, Uh-oh. good. I can't wait. Mm-hmm. Everyone in the senior class has a date for prom night. But someone has to come to prom alone. Someone who watches in the empty corridors. Someone who follows silent and unseen. Someone who waits until no one can help. Okay, could someone go talk to the guy who's writing taglines? I know. He's He's not the screenwriter. I know you're working on a screenplay, Terry, but this is not the time or place. we got to fit it on. And they keep focusing on this, someone coming to the prom alone or something. It's like, someone, who hurt you? (laughs) (laughs) This is the guy who got stood up at the prom. I'm going to write taglines now. I blame Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> I just copied him. I, okay. <laughs> I didn't write him. There's a special night in the lives of all of us. A night we can break all the rules and make our own. Prom night. For some, it's the end of innocence. For others, it's the end. Oh, this guy totally See, why did they have to end all that? Yeah, why did they have to add all that? Like, what is the deal? He is Just taking out his He's having people. the greatest time of all. He is, he is. Okay. He can't believe they actually used all these. Yeah. I bet these were I bet these were uh, voiceovers on the trailers. <laughs> Maybe. Sounds like it. I don't see these packs or something. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Jude is going to the prom. Wendy is going to the prom. Okay. Kelly is going to the prom. But for each of them, it's going to be a night they will never live to forget. You know who's not going to the prom? The tagline writer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like that invited. turn of phrase at the end. They'll never live not to invited. forget. Not invited. They'll never live to forget. Okay. As children, they played a killer's game. Now it's the killer's turn to play with them. Karma's okay. A that's actually yeah. not the worst one here for sure. So at least it's short. A killer waits at the high school dance. Okay, that's brief. Uh, okay, uh, maybe maybe you pulled it back a little too far. Let's, let's, let's <laughs> yeah, that, back the other way. This is the best one, I think. If you're not back by midnight, you won't be coming home. Uh, that's not bad. Okay, the yeah. best one out of this bunch. Yeah, that's so yeah. Fun. Some will be crowned; others will lose their heads. I like that. Oh, one. okay. And that's yeah. totally with the film. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fair. The night someone came to the prom alone. Okay, geez, Terry, stop. Get over it. Let it go. <laughs> Halloween. I know it's like serious. <laughs> this is this is bad. Oh, it is. All right. And last but not least, Thea stalks the high school prom. 
a fiendish killer seeks revenge on four romantic teenagers okay. who share one terrifying secret. Mm hmm. Southern, Southern Gothic. Huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, well, we appreciate that, Chad, and that's Thank been. You. Tagline oh, with Chad. Shit. Chad's our hero, cool and rad. With him reading taglines, they can't be that bad. Best part of the whole the absolute <laughs> thing. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. I, I just wish it was, I just wish I'd like made it a little bit speedier. It oh, it's good. Oh, no, that's perfect. I like it. No. Mm, I like it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Y'all are like kind. No, All right. Really, um, well, let's <laughs> just jump into this. So, <laughs> okay, this is a great poster. It is. You know, I, you can't take anything away from that. And it's actually in the movie, to a point. You know, we don't get that exact yeah. shot. But I mean, he does have that. All that yeah. stuff is in the movie. Oh, by the way, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> the guy. I'll, I'll get his name here in a minute, but the actor that played the brother. Okay, spoiler. The killer, um, he said his kids were digging in his attic at one mm. point and and found the mask. He had the mask, oh, the, wow. the glittery mask, and so now he has three daughters, and the first two daughters begged him, and he went to their prom. Oh wow! With the mask on and going, you know. What, what, I, I can't remember what it is he says on the phone. Come out to play, Wendy, or something. <laughs> you know. try, try that nowadays. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. If he did that now, they would have his picture in the front office with orders to lock yeah. the doors. If he should. Oh, I'm sure they had approval. You know. Yeah, they I must. would think. But anyway, that's it. That is that's a that's a great poster. Yeah, it's got Wendy a kind of giallo look to it. Got the mask. Mm -hmm. Got the shard yeah. of the mirror. And like a the reflection Dario of the body. Gloves. Yeah, come on. Hanging up and upside down with blood and a pool of blood under their head on the on the little shard of mirror. And they pick the right tagline. Mm -hmm. I'm a little surprised back. Jamie Lee's name isn't more prominent, but I guess this was still pretty early on. Well, they don't. Uh, there's nobody's names very prominent. No, it? no. Um, Leslie Nielsen, Jamie Lee. I mean, he gets he gets top billing. I'm sure because of his. Yeah. And this is right before Leslie exploded. Yeah. With uh and, and uh, then just three police airport, I think. Didn't airport mm -hmm. come come out right about airport. Or not airport, airplane. airplane. Yeah, I think right after this, but yeah. He was always he up to this point, he was always a leading man type. Uh, straight, straight as an arrow. Yeah. Until a police squad came around and <laughs> Frank Drebin, prom night. I, I like this poster. This is the only mm -hmm. one I remember sure. seeing. Well, and that's close to a shot they have too, where yeah, they're doing the practice and she's walking down. The hatchet isn't there, but she yeah, kind of like, has that look she... on her face. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, the other good mm -hmm. thing about this poster, if you go, if you see this and then go see the film, you are led astray because you'll be thinking, oh, it's Jamie. Jamie's mm -hmm. the killer. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. not the dress and that's not the crown. That and had. that oh that crown was the ugliest thing and that dress oh, is yeah. so much better where'd they so... get that crown burger king it kind of looked like it it kind of did i had to like buy the, five whoppers to get this <laughs> plastic version of the paper <laughs> burger king clown. so i pulled another one up bill just okay for, for grinch because i saw this one from tv oh. guide oh and that's that's not a bad graphic, you know. For... That's not bad. Thank God they put the dancing front and center, so you, you're warned. <laughs> First time on TV, 9 p.m. Yeah. on NBC. See, that was the difference. If it was a theatrical movie, it was first time on TV. If it was a TV movie, it was like world yeah. premiere. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow, world premiere. That sounds exciting. It's like, no, we just made it for TV. <laughs> no theater wanted this. Okay, okay. Well, we were talking about Leslie Nielsen. He plays uh, Jamie Lee's dad, the killer's dad, and the victim's dad, who sets it all off. And the principal of the school. Yep, getting down there, dancing. There he is. Making principal a monstrous fool of himself. Hammond. I can hold my breath a long time. Yeah, Listen, with the red yeah. and the blue, it's so I love awesome. That. Mm -hmm. He didn't do a lot of horror films. Day of the Animals is pretty cool. 
and uh, of course creep show is awesome now is that is okay is that a correct picture of him at the bottom yes, or? yes. oh it is wow see i yeah, I had another picture because I can't tell one person apart from another, and especially if they all have the same crew cut. Yeah, yeah. Um, I went from Forbidden I went, Planet. Yeah, from Forbidden Planet, and that's Anne Francis. Yeah. Uh, who Jack Kelly spends a lot of time trying to hustle her, but she ends up with Leslie Nielsen, kind of. Uh, but yeah, I went I went to the look up images for that. And there was a bunch of them like that, where if the guy wasn't full face, you mm -hmm. couldn't tell who it was because they all had the same color hair, the same haircut, uh, you know, general features. But yeah, yeah. Forbidden Planet. We got to do that in. one. We got to do that one. I didn't put up a picture of Robbie the Robot. Oh, that's a great movie. Great movie. Yeah, you had a better picture, but it just wasn't him. It wasn't him. Yeah, well, <laughs> other than that, what was the it was, problem? It had Robbie the Robot and Anne Francis in it. Yeah. Uh, but but no I couldn't, I couldn't find thing. one. Uh, like that to replace it so yeah you're right i mean he's barely in this um so uh do you remember the uh the bald teacher at the prom and there was a girl in kind of a red dress strapless red dress that was kind of chatting him up all the time a blonde mm -hmm. yeah okay so we had no idea who that was i looked at that and went oh that's a high school teacher or a high school kid what's he doing what's this what's this guy doing with the high school kid well no she was the uh leslie nielsen's temp secretary and she had a couple scenes before that setting it up that she was oh. kind of ditzy and and uh anyway oh so they you didn't... would but but cut the back In the back story is cut so now we think the the uh, teacher's a perv you know yeah wow. yeah and everybody said i I mean, apparently, they said Leslie Nielsen had, they called it a fart machine. Yeah. One, and that he walked around with that all the time. Yep. Just walking down the hall, everything except in scenes. You know, the, the he used one to guy, do it on interviews, like on talk oh, shows and stuff. Yeah. Like anytime he was on a talk show, he'd sit down and, and, and wouldn't even acknowledge it. It was his thing. He, he went to, uh, and, and he wouldn't say anything. And so the people were like, you know, looking around. And uh, the, one of the one of the actors said that he kind of befriended him. He was uh, one of the one of the high school students. But anyway, they went out to lunch somewhere and met uh, Christopher Plummer was at this restaurant, and they all sat oh, wow. next to him. They sat next to him at the bar, and fucking Leslie Nielsen is hitting his fart machine <laughs> over and over and never saying anything. And and then he laughed and they. The kid says, Christopher Plummer looked over at me and says, he really does have a problem, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it so, seems weird that you would get that much joy out of this. Right. One he thought it was hilarious. That he played that prank on ever. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. What a, what a second career this guy had, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, you know, maybe the fart thing, I mean, that's probably, it's like, ah, we got to cast some people for this airplane movie. Who can we get who's straight laced, but actually a lunatic? <laughs> Wesley Nielsen. And he never looked back. Did he ever do any non-comedy again once, maybe Creepshow was the last one I can think of. Did he ever do any straight roles again Not once that I he can got think into that of. parody? It was always the Dracula dead and loving it, and yeah. that was oh, an yeah. airplane, and. Of the uh, police okay. squad movies, yeah, he yeah, did it so well, well. He just did I, deadpan so well. I wanted to mention this quickly and I forgot, but the, the writer William Gray, right before this, he wrote the script, uh, co wrote the script for The Changeling. Oh, wow, so that's a, that's a huge change, and then uh, An Eye for an Eye, which I think Christopher Lee, Chuck Norris, Richard Roundtree. Wow, that's a hell of a cast. Um, and I think I'm, or no, that was a cinematographer, humongous. You guys seen that? Uh, I, I think I remember it. hating it. Um, oh, it doesn't sound real great. Hmm. A woman is raped at a cocktail party years later. Her son grows up to be a big, hairy, murderous monster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, God, One of those. He, uh, but the Philadelphia experiment, uh, okay. Black Moon Rising, um, 
and some TV episodes and stuff. So yeah. Uh, all right, Leslie Nielsen. He has two hundred and some like two hundred sixty credits, I think. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah, two hundred sixty credits. You don't think he did much uh, horror before? I'm wondering how much like science fiction stuff he did early on. I, I don't think that much, really. I mean, Forbidden Planet was was kind of an aberration, a big budget studio science fiction movie. I don't know that it really led to very many. There weren't too many films like that made. This Island Earth, I guess, would be the other one. They were very few and far between. Oh, he was in Ransom, which was remade not too long ago with Mel Gibson. Hmm. Uh, This was uh, 1956. uh, Noir. Yeah, so I don't know. But God, what a career. But he doesn't really get a chance to shine here. No. You know? And I, I couldn't figure out where he went. I mean, he's at the prom, and at some point his wife disappears, and then he disappears, and we never see him again. If if there was any if there was any comment yeah. or dialogue where he says, I'm, "I'm taking your mother home. She's too upset. It, it's gone. They just disappear." Right. And maybe that's the. I I thought that the the killer might be the mother. Yeah, because he that had could have kind been of fine. a kind of a slight build and had. Some some amount of makeup around the eyes or something, um, but says the brother with the mom's lipstick. Yeah, he's a good guy. Oh well, now he was in. I wonder if that's a comedic part. He was in the Reluctant Astronaut, the hmm. Don Knotts movie. Leslie. All righty. So then we have Jamie Lee, Curtis. looking very lovely. Very yeah. lovely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she did. And she classed this joint up a lot. Yeah. yeah. I would say. Um, she was a lot better than her cohorts in this movie as far as the acting and her presence and everything. Oh, I kind I, I thought the other ones were pretty decent too. The other high school yeah. girls, anyway. Those those as far as the acting, I think all the acting yeah. was good. There was some of it I was really shocked by. Like I was like, wow, they did. They're really yeah, doing yeah. a good job. It's, yeah. But, but I kind of get what Chad's saying, too. I could see where this movie could have tilted more into parody and everything. But when your oh, lead yeah, actress yeah. is playing it straight and and actually putting on a performance, I've been in films like that that could have easily slipped one mm-hmm. way or the other. But if there's one person there who's doing a really good job, you don't want to look like a schmuck. You know, they kind of, mm-hmm. everyone sort of elevates their act. It's like, okay, we're in a low budget zombie movie, but this person's acting their heart out. I don't want to look like a jerk. Yeah. She so, was in Halloween. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, now when they were making, Jamie? when they were making this movie, oh, yeah, had yeah. Halloween come out. Oh yeah. 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 And in fact, let me, let me throw yeah, this that's up true. there now yeah. so we can talk about it. I got this. I, I put this together just cause I there wanted to know uh, the filming dates and the release dates. So, Halloween filmed in May 1978 and re- was released just before Halloween in 1978. Then just like six months after the release of Halloween, Carpenter starts filming The Fog uh, in 1979. That's not released until January 31st, 1980. Uh, but it's filmed April to May 79. Then Prom Night is August to September 1979 and released in July 18th, 1980. And then Terror Train, November, December. So just like two months later, she starts Terror Train. And that's released October 3rd, 1980. And then Road Games in Australia was shot in May, 1980, and released uh, February 27th, 1981. So the release dates are, uh, what, it's like 13 months from Halloween to The Fog, and then six months to prom night, less than three months to terror train, and then eh, about five months to road games. Or maybe Where was four. Halloween two in all this? Uh, that came. That comes after that. That's. Uh, but I. I, I should. I should have added that too. But uh, I, I just find it. Road games. I, I think find it's it interesting. We tend to think of you know Jamie Lee Curtis as the screen queen of the eighties and everything, but really this mm-hmm. is it. This is just, six films is and yeah. in a very short period of time is when she did all this. And I think very wisely she walked away from doing horror. This, this intense three year period of just making lots of horror films 
and getting that reputation. If she had gone for another year or two, she would have been typecast forever. That would have, that would have been it for her. And I think it was a really smart move to walk away and, and also, you know, take roles that showed her considerable comedy acting chops too. Cause you know, that, that could offer her a lot more opportunity and, She's come back to horror. She's come back to her roots and done some stuff, you know, in, in sort of the second half of her career. But, um, yeah, I was sort of surprised at how few there were. And really, when you're talking about classics, Halloween, Fog, Road Games is good. That's about it. I mean, really, not these are, these are not, like, great films. I, I should have included Halloween 2 on that because that was... Uh... That was 81. I'm looking for the, I'm sure it was right around Halloween. So, man, she was just churning them out. October 30th, 1981. So she was really, she really eight, was eight months eight. after road games. So you can't, you can't underestimate how smart she was as much as I love her in horror films. I would have been happy to see another six of them career wise. That was a really good move to, to take a chance and, and walk away from success here. Well, and three of them are carpenter. And three of them are other folks. Uh, um, so so the, the director of Prom Night says that her manager called him. Hmm. And they had, they were going to use... Uh, Eve Plum. Yes, from the, from the Brady Bunch. What? She had done some successful <laughs> TV movies. And so Marcia, that's what they... Marcia, They wanted her because the, this, this producer had just made a bundle selling some movie to TV that he had produced before. So he wanted to have somebody that was going to make him money going to TV. And they finally convinced him that Jamie Lee was going to make him more money. <laughs> Good move. Yeah. Before nothing, nothing against Eve Plum, but clearly. Oh, so, so here's, yeah, here's a few of the, and it, so here's Jamie the in the eighties. Yeah. It's, it's insane how many she did. And then that, that just that literally kind of made her i cuz those are those are not those are mass appeal horror movies mm -hmm. those aren't uh you know the kind that only the horror fans know about right and i love fog the fog so, the fog is such an underrated horror film it really I agree. is it really is great mm -hmm. ghost story which is hard to pull off and good great cast mm -hmm. um yeah. Well, and that's why she, I think she progressed so much in that short period of time as an actress, you know, just mm -hmm. three years she does those movies and really pushed her. Yeah. You can see in the fog you're seeing, she's a, she has a really good, interesting character in the fog, interesting arc and everything. You start seeing, you know, her and who was it? Stacy Keach, was it? Tom Atkins. Uh, Tom, Tom Atkins. Atkins. Tom yeah. Atkins. Yeah. It's Stacey like man, road games. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, Tom Atkins <laughs> and, and Jamie Lee. It's like I'd watch a movie with the two, these two characters, even if and Adrian so Barbeau, old. right? And Adrian she, Barbeau. She had, oh, the, yeah. she had the radio show. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really love the Fog. I, I revisit it every few years, and yeah, same it's here. really well done. John Houseman at the beginning and around mm -hmm. the fire. Great. Well, movie. and. Uh, after this long career now, she finally won uh, an Oscar. That's right. That's right. For comedy. For movie, yeah, for the movie I can never remember the name of. And playing in Everything, it, Everywhere. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Yeah. yeah. Great film. I love that. Mm -hmm. Smart film. Yeah. So she's good in this. She's, she's dead. And, and I, I agree. Uh, without take Jamie Lee out of this, cut its profits in half. Or more. I mean, she's she's the draw. Yeah. Uh, that. So what else do we have? Well, then you know, at the beginning, so this this movie opens up with these four kids playing this killer game inside creepy this ass kids. Yeah. creepy mm -hmm. ass building, and uh, the younger Jamie Lee Kimberly Hammond, and then she has a this this girl Robin has a twin. Alex Hammond, Alex. So, um, the 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 young Jamie Lee and and young Alex walk away, and she she hangs out and uh, well, actually, just Jamie Lee walks away, and supposedly the twins hang out, but the she's the only one that goes inside the building. Yeah, 
and these kids attack her to the point of where they're screaming killer 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 and uh she falls back <laughs> that's so window. ridiculous it's insane um, and lands on this glass and, and then another pain falls out and I don't, I don't know what part of it killed her but uh and she then in the, in the movie you see a, a shadow of somebody come up and looking at her i and thought it was obvious who it was i but, thought it was painfully obvious who it was but then like i yeah at that yeah. point but. Um, well the other thing is the brother character is like so superfluous to the script and he's he's useless which means his only reason to be there is to be the killer he's either going to be a victim or the killer mm -hmm. he puts he he puts a necklace on jamie lee curtis and then uh he's a part of part of the G, dj act for the prom apparently uh, at least he's up there doing something we know it's not the creepy caretaker we know it's not the guy who's burned up you know freddy krueger there or whatever it's you know, there's got to be a twist, and mm -hmm. the most logical twist was the brother. And to the point where, if I was going to doubt it, it's like, well, it's so obviously the brother. Maybe it's not obviously the brother, but it was obviously the brother. So, so the little the little boy there, uh, Brock Simpson, was a producer's son. Uh, other nepotism. than that, yeah. So then, you know. When you go to the prom, everybody gets dressed up. Everybody's got a date for the prom, and they go to the prom, and it's 1980, so yeah. I guess. Uh, so you, you you do hijinks. You, you hijinks. smoke a little doobie, and then um, What dance. were they going to do with, with these guys? I don't understand. So he was going to walk out. Okay, I get it. They were taking their places. Right. I, right. It actually, like, I did not get it. I was like, I was like, what are they doing? Like, to be honest with you, the guys kind of looked. Uh, I didn't even, couldn't even really tell them apart. <laughs> even oh, what was they the prank? Look yeah. The same. yeah, 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 yeah. Because when the dude got his head lobbed off, I thought it was the dude. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's oh, too bad. Man. And then I was like, wait, why is she running to the other dude? Oh, because that wasn't his head. Okay. Sorry. So I'm guessing Sorry. the killer thought that he was actually killing the guy because he was wearing the crown, right. even though they look, they look nothing alike. You right, know? right, well, right. from the back, from the back. All he saw was from the back and somebody wearing I don't the crown. Know. I don't know, but it's okay because he was a jerk. Did. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. He's That's wearing a him. mask. He's and his head, his head goes rolling down the runway. Uh, Which was a good shot. Stage. Yeah. It wasn't I like, I like Jude there. I thought she was cool. Yeah, I liked in, her in the middle there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I thought, I thought that couple was great. I loved that. Yeah, yeah. I liked mm -hmm. them. I felt I did feel bad when they died. Slick. Uh, when the guy goes uh, takes the uh, takes the cliff. Hey, who builds a high school next to a death cliff? Like that's you know, a great question. I Isn't mean, that what the name of the high school is? Death Bluffs? <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Funny, Can you imagine how many kids you'd lose every That's year? A good question. The finals week, the stress and everything. Oh, we lose more kids each year at prom for that. those damn bluffs out, outside. Yeah. <laughs> well, that kid, that, that kid was so dorky and so cocky. You know, My name is Sea yeah. Orbit. You could call me Slick. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody calls you Slick. Uh, oh, yeah. But yeah, it was cool. I, I love the I love the relationship, and that I thought yeah. that played out really well. And uh, and then they die, they die. So there was a story like, how was that? According to the director, they had this van. They bought this cheap van and they painted it up. But for some reason, they didn't have it anymore. I don't know if they had to rent it or, or what the deal was. But the the stunt guy stole a van that looked just like it and sent it over the cliff. What? And then they, the they they said the police came and everything because it oh, made wow. such a big what? explosion. Yeah. <laughs> well, it blew up before it ever hit the ground. Right. There was some there was some what? weird stories about this movie. That he Man. claimed that the stunt guy, the guy that played the Stole killer, that. was a guy that just showed up and ended up choreographing all their stunts and fight scenes and everything. And then when the movie was done, disappeared and they never heard from him again. <laughs> what? Shut ones. up! Are you I'm serious? not kidding. I'm not Shut kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. 
Then they found the real stunt guy tied up in a back room somewhere. Are you serious? That's That's awesome. I'm like, I was trying to look to see. Surely they had his name if they paid him. Now, maybe they paid him cash. I don't know. I got to say, that is the kind of -of out-of-the-box thinking that really, you know, will help you if you're in the world of indie films. You know? You need a van, steal one. Well, I'd say I didn't see him again either because I ain't no rat. But, like... Yeah. Yeah. Did he look like Kurt Russell? Well, I'm trying to see if uh, well, he's something it's about crazy. directing oh. that he directed those scenes. He was like the second unit director, and I saw some credits for second unit directors, but I didn't like click on them to see if they hmm. had any other credits or anything. So, second unit director, assistant director. There was four of them. So this guy could still be roaming Canada freely now, just like. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't the same guy that stole the van as did oh. the stunts. Oh, it was, okay. it was a different guy. Okay, so this guy, uh, Dan Nyberg, who has a second assistant director credits, he's got three credits. Hmm. <clears throat> he just he just hangs out in uh, Toronto and shows up on set. And, hey, I can do those stunts. That's awesome. <laughs> you need any mean... stunts done, Betty? I don't know. <laughs> I don't How know. about a van? You need a van? I can get you a van. I should have yeah, done some more searching on that. Maybe somebody that's listening can answer that. Uh, knows the, the backstory. Know. Maybe also, the guy himself will write in. So the cinematographer <laughs> was yes. a guy named Robert New. Number? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that would be great. Um, yeah, 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 I would. I'm the guy you were talking about. All right. Uh, what was kind of cool yeah i agree with bill there was way too much like soft focus and gauzy fuzzy looking stuff but uh it was kind of cool how they managed to get and maybe that's an easy thing to do how they had all these shots with the lights with the uh the starring around them i don't know what do you call that uh like the lens flares yeah, yeah. but like yeah streaming out from but some of that was pretty cool i thought oh, oh yeah it's cool I like listen it Okay, let me make a confession. Around 1979, 1980, I got myself these Devo glasses that made that star filter effect, that rainbow stars thing. Oh, yeah. I, I wore them all the time. I drove heavy machinery wearing those things. And in my defense, <laughs> I was an idiot. <laughs> They they still make those glasses. They, still they make, make them those. for Christmas yeah. lights. Yeah. Well, they have so they just have a lens that they put over. Is that the thing? Or it's yeah. Well, it's, it's the just lens, lens flare make... is actually when you get the light. Well, I mean, I, right. I think with these they got the light just right. I don't know right. if they used something they could have, but well, well, it's J.J. Abrams movie. <laughs> I mean, it does. It builds the the only reason I'm saying I think it's not is because all those white lights should do the same thing too. That's true. They should. Yeah. Yeah. Not there was very specific people. ones that were. Yeah. Well, this guy, the cinematographer, uh, what did I say his name? Robert New, N E W, also did Night of the Creeps. Hmm. Oh. I like the cinematography in that one much more. Um. But it wasn't Canadian, was it? Well. There you go. Uh-oh. For a Decker film. That's right. Good one. All right. Well, <laughs> and now it's time for what do we what? have? We had 80s hijinks. Oh, now we have the reveal. The big reveal. And I was underwhelmed. <laughs> yeah, I didn't care at all. <laughs> I don't. I, I I was confused how she knew who it was all of a sudden. Like she knew immediately, looking into his eyes or something. And I was like, okay, I guess. That's why I thought it was her mom. I thought it was her mom for a while because I thought the eyes looked rather feminine. I thought me too. Okay, we I had makeup on, didn't he? Well, so did he. Oh, He's yeah. like got lipstick on, and which which was not explained. So was he becoming kind of, his, he sister? his sister? Did he did he feel maybe? like? He oh, was maybe that's it. Zest that fire it. or. I don't know. No one told me. So Mm-mm, I don't know. Could be anything, really. And since we didn't really get to know this character, I didn't feel the sense of. Tra- I felt bad for Jamie that she just whacked her brother rather lightly upside the head, but I guess it killed him. I guess whatever. Not a lot of blood there, but I feel oh, that's bad a good for point. her. I didn't even realize that she killed her brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
See, it didn't mean much because we hadn't really established much of a reason to care about mm -hmm. this guy who was yeah. obviously the killer. It wasn't a, it wasn't a real obvious death scene either because he didn't mm. there was, there was no like last slump it was just like I don't yeah know. and he did this weird thing like he almost <laughs> I was kind of laughing I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I think that I'm was from his that. final bowel movement <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that oh. may well have been yeah. oh, uh, we're what all so the hell up. movie was I watching oh I think it was grave torture. It's a, it's a, a new movie from Joko Anwar on Netflix. Mm, mm -hmm. Great Indonesian movie. Oh, but wow. this guy worked in a morgue where they cleaned the bodies up, you know, for the Muslim rituals. And the, the, the one guy's going, if I know when I'm going to die, I'm not eating for two days beforehand. This is just oh. too gross. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chad, I, had to, I, I followed up with Chad going there. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> And so then, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember did did um the boyfriend ever reveal that he was part of the four that killed the sister? did he confess to I, that i don't think he did so if he keeps his yap shut no one's going to be the wiser because all the witnesses literally oh, all the witnesses no the boyfriend dead. did yeah the boyfriend said to her he felt so bad about what happened yeah they but had he that didn't say, he didn't say he did it yeah he um, felt bad everyone feels bad if your sister dies she's now the brother said you know, something Wait. in his dying uh, he, he was saying i killed her or something like that are which, they yeah, are they killed her or something i can't okay like i said i didn't care i don't <laughs> yeah. think that i don't think that anything would come out about nothing would need to come out about the he could have they could have just said well he he must have blamed us for some weird reason maybe he just felt bad that we're still alive and his sister was not i don't know they, i mean I could, they ain't saying I, anything they're all dead yeah i could write that off i could sure. make you know yeah well and then we have some a little bit violence. of violence a little bit of choppy choppy but there's not really much really no, like it's considering we have a decapitation here it's it didn't feel super blood of course it also didn't help that they had to stick in that one shot where He's decapitated. He's he's poking his head through a hole in the floor, and yeah, um, he's still kind of the whole idea that you you get your head cut off and you can still think or blink or talk or something for a few you know seconds or minutes. Yeah, not true. Not true. Are yeah, you yeah. sure? Well, I'm not going to put it to the test, but are but you that's, sure? Yeah, how hey, do you know, Bill? Are you I sure? had a, I, I had a dream once that I uh oh. <laughs> My teacher in school came and chopped my head off. Oh my god! <laughs> and my head fell down on the thing and rolled around, and my my view was like on the the hit the floor going up, seeing the lights at the. Floor. What about that chicken? That well, chicken that got its hair cut head cut off. Yeah, well, wow, that, those are. And I just want to say, Jeff, that that is not considered. A I've seen a chicken play a piano. These days, so. I, I well, I know, I know. Well, it was yes, it was, yes, the the a rooster that got his head cut off, but mm -hmm. they left enough of the brain stem. This is mm -hmm. an absolute true thing. I've, say, I've seen yeah. that. Henry, yeah. Henry they or something. Is called? Yeah, they fed him with yeah. an eyedropper. They they took him around tour for years. It's it's the most amazing thing. And the, the most amazing thing to me is that no one's tried to do it ever since. Like I could just see Thank a bunch God. of chick, chopping off chickens' heads, just trying to get that right angle to to replicate that. But I don't think. Oh, my brother and I used to do that, and I used to always have to tell him, make sure you leave enough of the brain stem. Yeah. <laughs> We ate a lot of chicken back then. I guess so. Leave the brain stem. Make sure you leave enough of it. All I right. thought that was the graduate there at the top. Well, I thought it was funny. The guy that, the, <laughs> you know, the bad guy who was the uh, sort of the John Travolta character from Carrie. Uh, yeah. He was, he was, he was just, uh, I don't know how to describe it. He was, he was almost boring bad, you know? Yeah. Just, yeah. He was, like, yeah. <laughs> No, that that's yeah, that's up. like the worst back. kind of insult. That's hilarious. Okay, well, how hard is one. it? How hard is it to make an unlikable bully? You know, maybe they should have talked to the guy who wrote the taglines because clearly he had some scars. Oh, yeah. But you know, yeah. it's it's pretty easy to to write a high school bully who is dislikable enough that it's like, yes, I can't wait till he gets decapitated. But he was just kind of a a goof. Yeah, I was. uh 
depending on what you uh which thing you read i was the, so the, the woman in the top is Anne marie martin mm -hmm. uh as we said was married to michael Crichton for like 15 years and when they got divorced pretending on which account you read somehow or another she came out ahead somewhere between 30 and 100 million dollars oh Sweet. my god um I Michael was a great Michael. writer, but I think he was married five times, so he couldn't have been. Yeah, I was married a lot. Uh, her quote was, his body was there, but Michael wasn't. Hmm. So he That was, makes sense. He I was imagine just always, so. He was when he was writing. writing books and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Always had That's ideas. That's why he was good so, at it. So. Anyway, I guess apparently they uh, claimed Twister was her idea, and uh, they... They collaborated on the screenplay. Okay. Well, shoot. We got anything else here? No, I think we summed it up. This chicken is dead. We can stop whipping. Well, it. Uh, okay. So <laughs> they had this weird thing that they added in, and I can't remember the guy's name. Was it Leonard Merch? Merch? He was supposed to be escaped from the asylum. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Killed yeah. a couple people. Right. Um, trying to see if they got his, his name on here. I think I know the last name was Merch. I just don't remember the first one. First name. I mean, I guess he was supposed. We were supposed to think he was the killer, but at no point right. did I. Um, and how right. dumb did they wrap that up? Hey, we found <laughs> yeah. him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, not only that, mm -hmm. this this guy that just escaped from the the asylum knows all these kids' names and is making this right. Uh, but. They they literally that was added later. Ah. Uh, um, the, the distributors or somebody wanted said that there's not enough. I don't know. I, they didn't really add any gore or any not enough child molesters just, in this film. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. So that was that was sort of the uh that, that's where the there's this little piece of Halloween, then you got the prom, kind of like Carrie, although she doesn't have any uh psychokinetic powers. Uh, and then what we had the creepy Joe caretaker, I, and I meant to have a slide of him oh. because he was in a lot of Cronenberg movies. Yes, yes, Robert Silverman. Um, I know he was in Rabbit and The Brood. Yeah, I think he was Scanners. in uh, Scanners. He was in Scanners. Oh. Yeah, he was in some good ones. Well, according to the director, he had been in a bad accident and wasn't fully recovered, and this was a good way for him to mm. make some money and not have. You know, a lot of lines and stuff. Just sit so, there and look creepy. That was nice. He of did them that. To he do did that, that for him. He was. Seems creepy. like they almost just tried to help him out, which is nice. Yeah. All righty. Any last comments on? I I think you got to watch this. I mean, if for no other reason than Jamie Lee Curtis is sure. Uh, can I give this one two Curtis. snaps and an eye roll? <laughs> <laughs> And I can't remember. I I've seen Terror Train, but it's been long enough that I really don't remember if it's something I liked or not. I liked Terror it. Train. It doesn't mean I'm gonna like it now for sure, but I bet I would. I like the fog. I like road games mm -hmm. a lot. I like Halloween too. I don't remember liking Terror Train all that much, but huh. <clears throat> Bill's way more picky though. Like yeah. I'm getting yeah. crotchety in my old age. <laughs> Crystal goes. Was this made in the 80s? I love it. Okay. I love yeah. it. <laughs> All right. It was like, uh, I don't have much time left on this planet. I can only devote it oh to Oh, my films. God. Wow. Bill. Bill. Jeez. I had that very same thought the whole time I was sitting there watching this movie. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. I'm wasting two hours yeah. of my time. Well, I don't have much left, and I'm wasting it watching this disco. Well, one, uh, one last little story. The... Uh, the director, Paul Lynch, actually had a story lined up and he was thinking about a horror movie mm -hmm. because it, they'd made, a, you know, they're making a lot of money now. And he met with Erwin Yablons, who was the producer for Halloween. And guess what Yablons told him? About a what? Come up with a holiday. Go back and come back with a, a horror movie based around a holiday. 
Well, he came up with prom night, which wasn't necessarily a holiday, but kind of an event. Yeah, but that's, thing. that's mm -hmm. and he was holidays he used. was telling uh, Simpson, who who was a, end up, ended up being the producer on this about it, and he says, "Bring that to me. Don't take that back to your blondes." So that's mm -hmm. that's how it ended up where it was. But I, I think that's just funny. Holiday, we need holidays. Well, I think it's yeah. clever. I think it. I think that it, they do get you know. Holiday films do get some attention, especially horror ones, you yeah, know, yeah. more fun. But it just got ridiculous, though, man. Happy birthday to me. Yeah. Saint Valentine's Day. Or what was that yeah. one? Uh, Bloody Mother's Valentine's Day. Bloody Valentine. Day. Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Uh, yeah, Mother's Day's dumb. Yes. So, <laughs> like, yeah, like I I'm, a, I'm a mother and I don't even like Mother's Day. That's a shitty holiday. Arbor like, Day. Yeah, that's no fun. Has there been an Arbor Day film? No. <laughs> no <it's> good. <laughs> oh God, let's let's hope not. Not not. No. <laughs> I've got to go. Trees. It's yeah. the trees. Yes, they also claim that this main plot about the four children committing a horrible sin, swearing to secrecy and being stuck years later, is used in "I Know What You Did Last Summer." It's probably used yeah. in lots of stuff, actually. Yeah, so. I would imagine. I think that's <laughs> that's older than time. I I gotta say. You know, going up to some guy and say, hey, I stole, I totally stole this uh, idea you had of somebody being chased. I'm like, okay, dude, I don't it's think so I dumb. really copyrighted <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, yeah. It's all yeah. right. All right. Well, let's go to feedback. Feedback. Yeah. So uh, first one, episode 252, Conan the Barbarian. Chad, you want to take that? Uh, let me get down here to it. Well, that's a lot of trivia. It was. Cheesy Pete. My <laughs> finger hurts. Jamie Lee Curtis. That's All right. right. <laughs> Conan the Barbarian, episode 252 by Lodos, Lodos 118. <laughs> Robocop soundtrack was done by the same composer. Oh. Well. Yeah. Those Conan. Uh, okay. Those are both good, good soundtracks. Yeah. Well, you guys talk for a minute while I quickly look it up. <laughs> Oh my God! There's a lot of people in. Robocop. So have you tried the new Basil Polidorus? Basil Polidorus. Ah. Um, and the picture on his uh, IMDb page is from Conan. Yeah. Well, that's go. that's just one of the greatest soundtracks of all time. Uh. And he won a primetime Emmy for Lonesome Dove. Oh. Okay. Oh. Cool. Very cool. I thought That's it was going to be something story. something completely like, uh, inappropriate. Like, are we supposed yeah, right, to know? Right. Like, like, he wrote the like, jingle for Bully Bowl <laughs> Cleaner. All right. Uh, next one. <laughs> Episode 263. Evil Speak. Crystal evil speak. from Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf. Absolutely love Evil Speak. Yet another reason why 1981 was the best year for horror. Clint Howard is a national treasure that should be protected at all costs. <laughs> See? <laughs> Yeah, I'm picturing it. Seeing him <laughs> swing that sword while levitating made me think he'd be a great Highlander villain for Connor McCloud. Okay, evil. I mean, I mean, okay, Lone Wolf. Look, no, 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 no. I can't, I can't support that at all. But kudos for trying. The acting is solid all around. The bullies were convincingly evil to. Cooper Smith, and much like Bill, I loved seeing the secretary in the shower scene. <laughs> You're making me sound like a weirdo. I like to nickname her Miss Tessmacher from Superman whenever she appears on screen because I couldn't remember his name. Miss Tessmacher! Tessmacher! <laughs> Richard Mole's <laughs> opening scene was memorable, as were the pigs. Oh, the pigs. Pigs galore. Thank y'all for discussing and reviewing an 80s horror staple. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says. Oink, oink. He sure and does a, like a, pigs. And a pig emoji. Yes. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, now we've got one for episode 266, Extra Bill. This is from Wealth Actually with Fraser Rice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Wealth Actually with Fraser Rice. Oh. This about extra. This movie is so devoid of logic, it acquires a certain dignity. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
<laughs> that is the tagline they should have put on the statement, poster. That yeah. is a great statement. <laughs> One of the great VHS boxes of all time, and the effects are nasty and make it well worth a watch. I'm convinced that Rob Zombie borrowed the alternate alternate ending concept for his White Horse Halloween remakes. Thanks for the listen. Well, thank you. I, I listen. Thank you. I am putting that line into my little Rolodex of whimsy. This movie is so devoid of logic, it acquires a certain dignity. That is poetry, <laughs> my friend. Well done. Devoid of logic, yet dignified. Mm. Or something. All right. And we have one for Death Ship, episode 267. Uh, from no dignity Emulus here. Emulus 79, Chad. Emulus says, slow as sludge as this film is, I prefer it to, I, ref, ref, I prefer it over Ghost Ship <laughs> from 2002. Also, what? Known, also known as Goat Shit by Chris Nelson. <laughs> A makeup guy who worked on it on a Sean Clark podcast somewhere, I remember, of which ripped off the cover art. The blood shower scene I've only ever seen in a later film called Cthulhu Mansion, which is even worse than this, though. Some laughs can be had out of it. The director of that absurdity also unleashed slugs on us. Yuck. Wow. I love Ghost Ship. I'm sorry. I know that's a hot take because a lot of people hate that movie. I liked Ex it too, well, except, but I'm going to call I, it Goat Shit from now on. For yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> I think it's one of the best openings of any horror movie ever. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that the people who dislike the film do agree that the opening scene is awesome. Yeah. But from then on, but I liked it. I liked yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. I don't care. I get it. I'm easy. I like horror. I yeah. like poop. I like turds. I like bad horror. I, I, I don't remember a lot about it, but I remember being a little disappointed. That's what I remember. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Make sure you save that little snippet of audio there. I like right, poop. Right. I, I like, like poop. poop. <laughs> I will do that. I will do that. I'd like to hear that at the end of every show. I, I, we, at the beginning of it, when we say, and now, Crystal, what did you think about this? And we immediately cut to, I like poop. I like poop. I like turns. That's great. I'm glad you said that, Chad. You're like Leslie you. Nielsen with a fart uh, machine. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Lastly, this is actually came out. This was a comment, uh, you know, when I post the schedule for the, the month. Uh Wait, prom night? What is this guy got a time machine? Yeah, yeah. He was making a comment about the fact that I said we're doing prom night this uh, month. So, Crystal from Travis McDonald. Good looking lineup. Prom night is one of those 80s films I never cared for, but it's cool to see you guys cover it. See, I think everyone feels the same way about this film. It's yeah. like a classic, and I feel like it's a must watch, but I don't think it's as that great. You know, I think like it's, it's a just, classic it's okay. because of, of, um, Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Is the only reason I think it's a classic because it's one of her early movies. She's great in it though, too. Yeah, she I, is. I have to say she really is. Like, and I love the scene with her. Sorry, I know we're going back to talk about the film, <laughs> but her and the other chick when she's like, Well, I'll try to remember that. Ooh. Wow. Get her, girl. Well, it was wow. I think if wow. we talked about this earlier too, if she wasn't in it, I think this movie would be a lost. Yeah. Cause I mean, they would be in the yeah. bargain bin rentals. Ah, uh, yeah, it 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 might have might have made back the money, you know, but it wouldn't have made fifteen million. I don't yeah. Think. Um. All right. Well, that's cool. Thank you, uh, Travis mm. and Amulus and Fraser Rice, the yep. Lone Thanks, Wolf. Guys. Love you, yes. Lone Wolf and yeah. Lodos. 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 Lo Lodos, 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 and w well, you did wealth actually. I did. And Travis, well, I, I said Fraser Rice. I said Fraser Rice. Oh, okay. Uh, I believe he has a, a, a YouTube Man. channel or something. That's a long I'm way. guessing. Anyway, uh, appreciate that, everybody. We love your feedback. So uh, make comments on the Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel page right there. You can make comments. Yep. Uh, answer the questions we don't come up with. I've been getting answers to questions. We say, oh, you guys asked this. I got somebody made a comment on, uh, oh, <clears throat> on Craze in, in 70s uh, about the first time they saw their first memory of Jack Pallets because we were talking about mm. that in the 70s. But Crystal, 
This guy yes. led me to first. He told me how, hey, Vinegar Syndrome just announced a three pack uh, Blu ray set with craze in it, mm -hmm. which was this weird movie we did for the 70s. And I'm like, oh, cool. So I go look at Vinegar Syndrome, and right there, right there underneath that was a 4K release of Howling 2. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, you already knew about that. Okay, well, never mind. Well, the Vinegar Cinema releases, they release some good stuff all the time. They do. But, they but do. if you don't get them, I see, I try to not keep up with them too much because it makes me want them. And then it's like, you're 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 looking at 40 or 40. Or uh, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a big, there's, there's only a few They're movies so I nice. feel like. Listen, I listen, listen. Like the Blu-ray. Listen, Jeff. I ordered Craze. There's so many movies out there that don't get a 4K release, like Bugsy Malone, for one. <laughs> exactly. the, kids, the kid movie? Yeah, the kid. Yeah. Bugsy Malone is one of the greatest movies ever made. <laughs> and it doesn't get a 4K release, but Howling 2. Howling 2 is good. What do you I like Doo Doo. Is, ah, I like Turds and Doo Doo. I like and Turds and Doo Doo. It gets a 4K <laughs> release. All right. all the world's right. not fair. Nope. Well, Jeff's we should. Like, we I've should lost have maybe, control. We're yeah, done. we're going. We're going back to. So, uh, yeah, leave comments on the Grizzly Magazine YouTube <laughs> channel, or you can send emails directly to feedback at gruesomemagazine dot com. Uh, we love them. So that's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we focus on another film released in the eighties. Next up is one chosen by Chad that has uh -oh. been oft mentioned. Yes. What are we doing, Chad? Listen to this cast. Jack okay. Palance. Whoa. Martin Landau. Cameron Mitchell. Yay. Sue Ann Langdon. Neville Brand. Hey. Larry Storch. Ralph Meeker. And David Caruso. Dang. I'm so excited for this movie. We're doing Without Warning from 1980. I don't know this film. You yeah, will yeah. know it. <laughs> you will know it. <laughs> And we can talk once again about the first time you became aware of Jack Palance. And Larry Storch. Oh, Larry Storch. That's God. I better start making these slides now. Every one of these people deserves their own uh, graphic. That's a hell of a cast. It is. It's amazing. I started going down the list. I was adding these on there and going, holy cow, holy cow. What? Not, oh, wow. Ralph it's like, Meeker was there a convention in Disney? time and they just scooped yeah. him up? And, yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, all right. Meeker, yeah. Catch us again here in two <laughs> yes. weeks for another great horror movie of the 1980s. As only decades of horror can do it. Or something like that. Thank you yeah. all, Chad, Crystal, and Bill. I really appreciate it. That was fun. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Night. So sweet. Yeah. Say good night. Good night. Night and night. Good night. <laughs> Yeah.